Top 25 ExxonMobil Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions commonly asked by ExxonMobil. These questions are crucial for candidates preparing to enter the competitive job market within the energy sector. We will also provide insightful answers to help you effectively communicate your skills and experiences. This guide aims to enhance your confidence and improve your performance during the interview process. 1. Why do you want to work for an oil and gas company during an era of clean energy? Working in the oil and gas industry presents a unique opportunity to contribute to the energy transition. I am motivated by the challenge of integrating sustainable practices within traditional energy frameworks. By joining a company like ExxonMobil, I can leverage my skills to help innovate and implement cleaner technologies while ensuring energy security. I believe that by working collaboratively within this sector, I can play a role in developing solutions that align with both economic growth and environmental stewardship, driving positive change in our energy landscape. 2. Can you describe a situation where you had to analyze a complex business process? In my previous role, I was tasked with improving the efficiency of our supply chain operations. I gathered data from various departments, including procurement, logistics, and inventory management. After mapping out the entire process, I identified bottlenecks in inventory turnover and delays in procurement. I facilitated meetings with stakeholders to understand their perspectives and then created a streamlined workflow that reduced lead times by 20%. This experience taught me the importance of cross-functional collaboration and data-driven decision-making. 3. How do you prioritize tasks when facing multiple deadlines? When facing multiple deadlines, I assess the urgency and importance of each task using the Eisenhower matrix. This helps me categorize tasks into four quadrants, urgent and important, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and neither. I tackle urgent and important tasks first, ensuring they are completed on time. I then allocate time to important but not urgent tasks to prevent them from becoming urgent. Clear communication with team members is also crucial. It helps manage expectations and allows for adjustments when necessary. Regular check-ins ensure I stay on track and can re-evaluate priorities as needed. 4. What do you know about ExxonMobil and its operations? ExxonMobil is one of the world's largest publicly traded energy companies, operating in over 60 countries. It specializes in oil and gas exploration, production, refining, and chemical manufacturing. The company is known for its advanced technologies, commitment to sustainability, and initiatives in carbon capture and biofuels. ExxonMobil's brands, including Exxon, Mobil, and Esso, are globally recognized. It plays a key role in the energy transition, investing in lower emission solutions while maintaining efficient operations in upstream, downstream, and chemical sectors. 5. How do you ensure accuracy when working with large datasets? Ensuring accuracy when working with large datasets involves a combination of systematic approaches and tools. First, I implement data validation checks at the point of data entry to catch errors early. Regular audits are carried out to identify discrepancies and ensure consistency. Using statistical methods to detect outliers is also crucial. I leverage data analysis software equipped with error checking functionalities. Ultimately, maintaining clear documentation of processes and assumptions enhances transparency and supports accuracy throughout the analysis. 6. Describe a time when you had to mediate stakeholder conflicts. In a previous project, Differing priorities emerged between the engineering and marketing teams regarding product features. Tensions escalated, impacting project timelines. I organized a meeting with both teams to facilitate open dialogue. By encouraging each side to express their concerns and highlighting shared objectives, I helped clarify misunderstandings. We collaboratively established a compromise that balanced technical feasibility with market demands. This not only resolved the immediate conflict but also fostered a greater sense of collaboration and understanding between the teams for future projects. 7. What strategies do you use to communicate complex technical information to non-technical stakeholders? To effectively communicate complex technical information, I adopt a few key strategies. First, I simplify the language, avoiding jargon and technical terms that may confuse the audience. I focus on the core message and break it down into digestible parts. Visual aids, such as charts or diagrams, can illustrate concepts clearly. Additionally, I encourage questions to ensure understanding and foster engagement. Tailoring my approach based on the audience's background helps me connect with them better, ensuring that the information is not only delivered but also comprehended and retained. 8. How do you stay updated with industry trends and advancements in technology? Staying informed about industry trends and technological advancements is crucial in the fast-evolving energy sector. I regularly read industry publications, subscribe to relevant newsletters, and participate in webinars and conferences. Engaging with professional networks on platforms like LinkedIn allows me to exchange insights with peers and experts. I also follow key influencers and organizations in the oil and gas sector to receive real-time updates. This multifaceted approach ensures that I remain well-informed and adaptable to changes in the industry. 9. Can you explain your approach to risk management in projects? Risk management involves identifying, assessing, and prioritizing risks, 
followed by coordinated efforts to minimize, monitor, and control the probability or impact of unfortunate events. I begin by performing a thorough risk assessment to identify potential risks associated with a project. This includes categorizing risks based on their likelihood and impact. I then develop mitigation strategies, which may involve contingency plans or resource allocation to address high-priority risks. Regular communication with stakeholders ensures everyone is informed, and I review risks periodically to adapt to any changes throughout the project lifecycle. 10. What experience do you have with sustainability initiatives in the energy sector? Sustainability initiatives are crucial in today's energy landscape. I have been involved in several projects aimed at reducing carbon footprints through the implementation of renewable energy sources, such as solar and wind integration into existing operations. I spearheaded a project that focused on energy efficiency audits, which led to a 20% reduction in energy consumption across our facilities. Additionally, I collaborated with cross-functional teams to develop waste management strategies, promoting recycling and reducing landfill contributions. Engaging stakeholders was also key in driving these initiatives forward. 11. How would you handle a situation where a colleague was not following safety protocols? In such a situation, I would first approach the colleague privately to discuss my observations. It's important to communicate my concerns respectfully and without judgment. I would listen to their perspective and understand if there were any reasons behind their actions. If the behavior continues, I would escalate the matter to a supervisor or safety officer, ensuring it is addressed promptly. Maintaining a culture of safety is essential, and I would also advocate for regular safety training sessions to reinforce the importance of following protocols. 12. Can you describe your experience with data analysis tools? My experience with data analysis tools includes proficiency in software such as Excel, SQL, and Python. I have utilized Excel for complex data manipulation and visualization, enabling me to present findings effectively. SQL has been instrumental in querying large databases, allowing for efficient data extraction and analysis. Additionally, I have worked with Python libraries like Pandas and NumPy for data cleaning and statistical analysis. This combination of tools has equipped me to derive insights from data, facilitating informed decision-making in projects. 13. What do you know about ExxonMobil's stance on fracking? ExxonMobil supports fracking as a critical tool for accessing domestic energy resources while adhering to strict regulatory standards. The company emphasizes safety and environmental protection in its operations. ExxonMobil advocates for responsible fracking practices, ensuring that water resources are safeguarded and emissions are minimized. The company invests in technology to enhance efficiency and reduce the environmental impact of its fracking operations. By promoting transparency and engaging with stakeholders, ExxonMobil aims to address public concerns while contributing to energy independence and economic growth. 14. How do you ensure clear communication when working in cross-functional teams? Effective communication in cross-functional teams involves several key strategies. First, I prioritize establishing common goals and objectives among team members to ensure everyone is aligned. Regular check-ins and updates help maintain clarity and accountability. I also encourage open dialogue by creating a safe space where team members feel comfortable sharing ideas and concerns. Utilizing collaborative tools, such as shared documents and project management software, enhances transparency and keeps everyone informed. Lastly, I adapt my communication style to suit the audience, ensuring that technical details are conveyed clearly to non-technical team members. 15. Can you explain the difference between upstream and downstream operations in the oil and gas industry? Upstream operations refer to activities related to the exploration and production of crude oil and natural gas. This includes locating oil and gas reserves, drilling wells, and extracting these resources. Downstream operations, on the other hand, involve refining, distributing, and selling the finished products derived from crude oil and natural gas, such as gasoline, diesel, and other petrochemicals. Upstream focuses on resource extraction, while downstream emphasizes product delivery to consumers, highlighting the full supply chain of the oil and gas industry. 16. Describe a time when you had to adapt to a significant change in your work environment. In my previous role, our team underwent a major restructuring that shifted our project focus from traditional energy sources to renewable initiatives. This change required me to quickly learn about new technologies and processes related to solar and wind energy. I embraced this challenge by enrolling in relevant online courses and collaborating closely with colleagues who had expertise in these areas. By actively participating in team discussions and sharing my insights, I helped facilitate a smoother transition for my team and contributed to our new project goals effectively. 17. How do you approach problem-solving when faced with a new technical challenge? When facing a new technical challenge, my approach begins with understanding the problem in depth. I break it down into manageable components, identifying key variables and constraints. Researching existing solutions and best practices in the field helps inform my approach. Collaboration with colleagues or experts can provide diverse perspectives and insights. After developing potential solutions, I evaluate them based on feasibility and impact. Implementing the most suitable option, 
I monitor the results and adjust as needed, ensuring continuous learning from the experience. 18. What strategies would you use to improve efficiency in a production process? Improving efficiency in a production process requires a multifaceted approach. First, I would conduct a thorough analysis of current workflows to identify bottlenecks and inefficiencies. Implementing lean manufacturing principles can help eliminate waste and streamline operations. Regular training sessions for staff can enhance skills and foster a culture of continuous improvement. Additionally, leveraging technology, such as automation and data analytics, can optimize resource utilization and provide real-time insights into performance. Finally, encouraging open communication among team members can lead to innovative solutions and collaborative efforts to enhance productivity. 19. Can you discuss ExxonMobil's approach to environmental sustainability? ExxonMobil recognizes the importance of environmental sustainability and integrates it into its business strategy. The company invests heavily in research and development to create technologies that reduce emissions and improve energy efficiency. ExxonMobil is committed to lowering its greenhouse gas emissions through initiatives like carbon capture and storage. Additionally, the firm focuses on sustainable practices in its operations, promoting biodiversity and minimizing environmental impact. Collaborating with stakeholders, ExxonMobil aims to develop innovative solutions that balance energy needs with environmental stewardship. 20. How do you handle constructive criticism? Handling constructive criticism involves maintaining an open mindset and viewing feedback as an opportunity for growth. I actively listen to the critique, ensuring I fully understand the points being made. After that, I reflect on the feedback and assess how it aligns with my performance. If necessary, I ask clarifying questions to gain further insights. Implementing the suggestions provided helps me enhance my skills and approach. Finally, I appreciate the feedback by acknowledging the effort taken to help me improve, fostering a culture of continuous learning and collaboration. 21. Describe a situation where you had to make a difficult decision with limited information. In a previous role, I was tasked with deciding whether to proceed with a project that had a tight deadline but limited data available. The project had significant implications for our team's success and budget. I gathered input from key stakeholders, assessed potential risks, and weighed the pros and cons. After careful consideration, I chose to proceed, implementing contingency plans to mitigate risks. This decision ultimately led to successful project completion, demonstrating the importance of decisive action even when information is scarce. 22. What do you consider to be the biggest challenges facing the oil and gas industry today? The biggest challenges facing the oil and gas industry today include the transition to clean energy, regulatory pressures, and fluctuating market prices. As the world shifts towards sustainability, companies must innovate to reduce carbon emissions while maintaining profitability. Additionally, geopolitical factors can impact supply chains and create uncertainty in pricing. The industry also faces increasing scrutiny from stakeholders regarding environmental impacts, necessitating a stronger focus on sustainable practices and community engagement to build trust and ensure long-term viability. 23. How do you ensure compliance with safety regulations in your work? Ensuring compliance with safety regulations involves a multifaceted approach. First, I prioritize understanding the specific regulations that apply to my role in the organization. Regular training sessions help keep the team informed about current safety standards. I implement routine audits and inspections to identify potential hazards and ensure adherence to safety protocols. Open communication is essential. I encourage team members to report any safety concerns without hesitation. Additionally, I actively participate in safety meetings to discuss best practices and foster a culture of safety within the workplace. 24. Can you explain the concept of reservoir management in oil and gas exploration? Reservoir management is a systematic approach to optimizing the extraction of hydrocarbons from an underground reservoir. It involves monitoring reservoir performance, understanding its geological characteristics, and implementing strategies that enhance recovery rates while minimizing environmental impact. Techniques such as simulation modeling, well testing, and reservoir monitoring are utilized to make informed decisions about drilling, production, and enhanced oil recovery methods. Effective reservoir management ensures that resources are utilized efficiently and sustainably, balancing economic viability with environmental stewardship. 25. What is your greatest professional achievement, and how does it relate to this position at ExxonMobil? My greatest professional achievement was leading a cross-functional team to successfully implement a new data management system that increased efficiency by 30%. This experience is directly relevant to the position at ExxonMobil, as it required strategic planning, collaboration, and the ability to communicate complex technical details effectively. By optimizing processes and ensuring data integrity, I supported the organization's objectives. I believe these skills will be valuable in contributing to ExxonMobil's commitment to innovation and operational excellence in a rapidly evolving energy landscape. In preparing for your ExxonMobil interview, it's essential to familiarize yourself with common questions and articulate your experiences effectively. By reviewing the top 25 interview questions and answers we discussed, you'll be better equipped to showcase your skills and fit for the company.
confidence and preparation are key to making a lasting impression. If you found this content helpful, please like the video and subscribe for more valuable insights on your career journey. Thank you for watching.